He's on a super team. You got Drew Holiday, you got a close in Middleton. He's the most dominant player that I've seen in a long time. And I got to give him his credit, but he but he has a closer. He has a closer. Same thing just like Shaq had. Shaq was the most dominant, but he had a closer in Kobe. And you have Drew Holiday, one of the best defenders in the game. So don't make it seem like your team is just uh, a whole bunch of D-leaguers. You know, you 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 have you have one D-leaguer that's an all-star now. So you have you have a super team. You might not have super names and guys that sell in tennis Hold shoes, on. but you have a super but Hold you have on. a super team. Don't don't diminish your teammates. You no, know, they trust me, they believe in me. They believed in us even when we were like we were last the city still was like on our side and um you know obviously i want i wanted to get the job done you know uh they, but that's my stubborn side like it's easy to go somewhere and go and win a championship with somebody else it's easy i could go i, I don't put anybody in the spot but i could go to a super team and you know just do my part and win a championship still one but this is the hard way to do it and this is the way and we did it. We did it. We did it, man. You can tell it just hits different. It hits different when you do it that way. When you stick with one team and you don't join other superstars. You mentioned Dirk and you mentioned the Heat. How do you think that this particular title compares? You acknowledged it. It's one thing to come from fans and media. It's another thing to come from the only player besides Hakeem Olajuwon and Michael Jordan to be Finals MVP, Defensive Player of the Year, and Regular Season MVP, and Giannis Antetokounmpo. And here are a couple of buzzwords that he used. My city. He said it was easy to team hop. He said, I wouldn't join a super team because all I have to do is just basically play a role and I could get a ring. And he owned it. And like I told you going into the season, one of the more brilliant things that Giannis did is he re-signed with the team. So now that takes pressure off of Coach Bud, who was under the hot seat if they didn't get to the finals or win a championship. But it also takes pressure off Chris Middleton. It allows him now to be the closer. That's the chess move that the Milwaukee Bucks employed this entire season that they hadn't done in the past. And for Giannis, he said it again. That's basically LeBron going to Miami, it's basically KD going to the Warriors, and him saying, well, I watched the journey of somebody like Dirk, who did it with one team, or Tim Duncan, Kobe Bryant. There are players who were fortunate enough to do it. Now, it's still about getting it done. But don't underestimate this, the my city part, the my city part. Kevin Durant was at a, a, a parade and his general manager, Bob Myers, even made a joke about basically him not being there when they built it. This is not coming from me. This is exactly how it went down. And as we saw that transpire, we knew that that would always be Steph Curry's city along with Klay Thompson, Draymond Green. So in my opinion, that was part of the impetus for KD saying, I wanna go somewhere else and establish that I can win a championship, in this case, with the Nets, something that he's hoping to achieve with James Harden and Kyrie Irving on the squad. Well, watching Giannis last night, you could see that he woke up that morning and he said, I will not be denied. And one thing that you mentioned were the free throws. That was one of the things that was so shocking about his performance. We knew he could dominate in the paint. We knew he could block shots. But I did not know that he could go 17 for 19 from the free throw line. And it's also, it's not just what you do, it's how you do it. He stepped up to the line, he was confident. He was shooting it in about seven or eight seconds. He woke up that morning and said, I'm going to go to sleep smelling like champagne, holding the finals MVP and the Larry O'Brien trophy. And Jalen, what do you think about the free throw performance from him last night? I think he's a perfect example of why free throws are about repetition, muscle memory, and confidence. Because he isn't vastly changed as a shooter from the last series to this series, but you alluded to it. He just took his time, he lived in the moment, and he took advantage of it. And watching him be so very dominant, 
To be honest, it gave me flashbacks to the early 2000s because we hadn't seen a player be so dominant in the paint as a big man in theory like Giannis. He had 20 points in the third quarter. He had two 20-point third quarters in this series. He had three games above 40. He had one game with 50. He had so many different blocks. And so I was like, man, that reminded me of how Shaq was. And Ooh. it made me want to call Dell Davis and apologize to him because I felt so bad watching the big fella turn and hit him with elbows. And there's nothing you can do when those big guys decide that they want to play in the paint. It's a, a, a perimeter oriented game and the wings definitely drive the narrative, whether it's a Michael Jordan or a LeBron James. However, in basketball, when you have a dominant big man that's going to play percentage basket or a foul type basketball, that's what Giannis decided to do. And he was unguardable. And you know what else he did? Silence DeAndre Ayton. That's mm -hmm. the other thing that Giannis was able to do. Defensively, he virtually made Ayton a non-factor. So now for the Suns, you don't have that balance to go with CP3, even if he did get going at some point in the second half. Devin Booker only had four points in the first half. He never got going offensively. They could have used Ayton's offense, but when the Suns are at their best, Jacoby, it's the Cams, Payne playing with speed and scoring the ball like he was able to do, or Johnson making threes, or Mikael Bridges, Jay Crowder. It's strength in numbers usually when they're at their best. The Bucks did a great job of not allowing them to do so. And lastly, Drew Holiday. He guarded anybody that made two shots in a row. It's like whoever made two shots in a row, put Drew Holiday on them. Did you see how he was sticking to Devin Booker? He, he stripped them twice. That, that's extremely mm -hmm. hard to do. You know this, Jacoby, you play ball. How many times do you see somebody just in the open floor that got game like Devin Booker just get snatched? That's what Drew Holiday was able to do. So it's a terrific defensive effort by the Milwaukee Bucks. It really was. I mean, Drew Holiday has been so good defensively throughout this entire series that we're all going to celebrate Giannis. And of course we should. He put up 50 points with 17 for 19 from the line, had five blocks. He was amazing. But it was Drew Holiday's defense which kind of turned this series in game three and game four. And you also alluded to something earlier that I want to talk about. That is the Middleton and Giannis pairing. These two had played together for so long. And it was during the celebration when the confetti was flying from the ceiling. There was a moment when they just sort of looked at each other like we did it. And I want to share that moment with you right now from the post game. Chris, you did it, huh? Did it. It's that joy, the joy, like we finally that is a lot or Milton's clutch. What do you think about that moment watching those two finally reach the mountaintop? It was it was terrific to watch in sports and also they knew they missed something. So they brought in some toughness and defense in PJ Tucker and Bobby Portis. Pat Connaughton made shots who was filling in for Dante DiVincenzo. But those two guys were the catalyst. And so many times, if the Bucks had the best record in the regular season or Giannis was winning back-to-back -back MVPs, the question was, could he do it with Middleton as the second best player? That was the question also that people were asking. And he silenced that easily by his efficiency, his patience offensively, and his nature to be clutch. Even in the closeout game, they needed him to put a couple of buckets in the hoop in order to finish yep. off the Suns. And he delivered. I'm glad you mentioned that because we'll all celebrate Giannis. We'll remember this as the Bucks title led by Giannis and Middleton and Drew Holiday's defense. But the Suns had some chances at the end of this game. There was an open three from CP3, an open three from Crowder, an open three from Booker. They had chances in the waiting seconds of this game. But this is all about the Bucks. Their first championship in 50. Oh, and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. But Jalen... While we celebrate Giannis, we'll continue to do so. We do have to talk about what this means for the Suns, what this means for Chris Paul, what is next for the Suns.
a championship celebration on Jalen and Jacoby.